Hey friends, so I'm out in the garden today. It's a very windy day, which is why my bangs look fabulous. <laughs> and I'm looking at our tomatoes. I'm trying to get the last tomatoes that we have out in the garden. You can see that our tomatoes got a late blight of some kind this year. So I'm working on getting um, some of the tomatoes before they spread across the whole thing. They've kind of spread up till, it's gonna spread up till here right now, but these are most of the tomato plants that did really well this year. I just wanna grab the last few. I have already saved a bunch of tomato seeds, but I'm going to show you how I do that as well. So you can save some of your own um, if you have some tomatoes left. I'm also gonna do the same technique with tomatillos, ground cherries, things like that. So if you can grab the ripest tomato <laughs> off of your plant, I'll take you inside so we can show you how that's done. All right, this is kind of a side note, but we've got the most powdery mildew on our zucchini plant that won't stop producing. Look at this thing. I just spotted this earlier. Don't know what that is on it. Probably the squash blossom that rotted a little bit, but I'll bring that in too. I cannot believe this plant is even still producing, honestly. It's had about three rounds of producing and it's got so much powdery mildew, but keeps giving us squashes, so. Mm. So I just got this basket full of tomatoes. You can see I got some green ones too, um, and some ones that aren't completely ripe. So all of these will freeze, really, but we've got stuff like my favorite, I call them yellow giant delish tomatoes because they are and they're nice and sweet. We've got stuff like these, which I love so much and didn't get enough of this season. So I'm saving those ones. We've got some that are just green. Um, those we will uh, either make some kind of like relish or just fried green tomatoes probably. And then we've got some other ones that are, you can see the difference here. This one's ripe and these ones are not. And we'll probably let a bunch of them uh, ripen up on the windowsill. And then um, we'll freeze those and can those later because life is busy right now. So uh, we're washing everything, throwing it in the freezer. We'll can it later when we've got a little bit more time. And let's save some tomato seeds. This seed saving technique is using fermentation to get all of that gelatinous, gooey goodness around the seeds off of the seed inside so that um, you can dry it easier. You don't have to kind of use your fingers to get all of that off. Um, the fermentation process will help that. So you can see here I have the giant yellow delish tomatoes. That's not their actual name. They're an heirloom tomato that I got from a friend a few years ago and I've saved seeds from for a few years. And I just love these tomatoes. They're delicious. Because I love them so much, I want to make sure I save the seeds. So I am scooping out all the little pockets around the tomato. I want to make sure I get as many as possible. Sometimes some of the seeds aren't viable, as in they won't produce a tomato plant. And I want to make sure I have as many as I can so that in the case that some of these seeds aren't going to work, I have a lot of backups, especially if I want to grow multiple plants. So all of the seeds and all of the gooey stuff is going inside of this jar. If you have smaller tomatoes like cherry tomatoes that don't have as much 
uh, seeds in them or just are smaller in general. I'll save seeds for multiple tomatoes in that case, just to really make sure that I have enough that are going to be good. So you can see this jar is filled up about half an inch or so with all of that tomato seeds and the gooeyness around it. I'm going to put a label on it. Labels are very important <laughs> here. And I'm going to put a top on it and I'm going to let it ferment for three to four days just out of direct sunlight and um, on the counter. As it ferments, it might get a little layer of mold on the top, but this doesn't seem to affect the seeds. That's just the fermentation process. If you're using a larger jar, like a pint sized jar, this is a half pint sized jar, you may need to burp the jar as the fermentation process might fill the jar. So just make sure you're paying attention to your jars that are fermenting on the counter. When you're picking tomato seeds to save, it's important to pick tomatoes that are at the ripest that they possibly could be because that will make sure that the seed inside is as developed as possible. So when I'm looking at tomatoes, these two are a great example. This one over here is less ripe, therefore the seeds wouldn't be as developed as much, but this one would be the right one to pick to save seeds from. Same with this guy, it's got a little bit of green on it. Eh, not that great. But if I put it in the window for a few days, it might help like lift those seeds up to develop them a little bit more. The nice thing is with this seed saving method, you'll know which seeds are viable or not at the end of the process. So that being said, I try to save from at least a couple tomatoes if I can. So I make sure even if the first ones weren't viable, then um, I've got the latter ones to hopefully make sure the seeds are great. All right, so what do we do after it's been on the counter for three to four days? This jar has been sitting on the counter for three to four days. You can see it's got some seeds in the bottom. It's also got some what looks like mold in it, um, which is totally normal and fine. I'm going to fill up the jar with water. I'm gonna wait a minute and you can see, you'll see a little bit better in, in a second, those seeds float down to the bottom. And then I'm going to pour off all of the liquid on the top very carefully, just allowing those seeds at the bottom to stay in there. And this is helping to rinse the seeds and get all of that uh, tomato material. Any seeds that aren't good will and won't grow will float to the top of the jar. And I'm going to pour those out too. I'll do this until the water runs clear. All these seeds that I have left had dropped all the way down to the bottom of the water when I filled it up and therefore they are viable seeds. Once that water runs clear, I'm going to spread the seeds out onto labeled parchment paper. I'm then going to spread out the clumps of the seeds really thin so I make sure they dry really well. You want your seeds very dry. And I'll leave them on here for at least a week, if not longer. Even though they look dry, they might need just a little bit longer to remain in storage. Thanks so much for watching our video today. Maybe you learned something new. Hopefully you get to save your own seeds this year. And if you are, write in the comments what you are saving, tomato or other. And be sure to subscribe to make sure you see our latest videos. We'll see you next time.